generating explosive plays and limiting turnovers. Well, on the defensive side, it's limiting explosive plays and creating turnovers. And so, uh, you know, again, I thought we uh, did some good things, but obviously uh, not to our standard, which, which to me is what we've got to get back to. Uh, with that being said, excited about the opportunity that Iowa presents uh, for us. Iowa is a, a typical Iowa team. I mean, I've played against them and coached against them since 2005. Uh, Kirk, Kirk has been there forever. Um, and, and those teams are very consistent in the brand in which they play and they come they come with. Um, you know, I expect our fans to, to show up here. I'm excited about having them here at home in the shell. Um, you know, Iowa is a one of the top defenses in the country. Uh, they play very, play very well, very uh, well coached in that they don't do a lot of things where they beat themselves. Um, they're able to run the football, which in the Big Ten, if you want to win, you've got to find a way to uh, run the football. And, uh, you know, again, will pose uh, quite a challenge. You know, their quarterback uh, kind of makes them go. They've got a very good running back in Goodson. Uh, then obviously their center, uh, a really big time player. So they're really strong down the middle as well as having some skill out on the uh, perimeter. You know, defensively, uh, you know, 97 and 91 are really good players for them. Um, two of the top leaders of sacks in our, in our league. Uh, number 31, the Mike Linebacker does a really good job. Kind of, you can tell he's the quarterback on the defense. And then obviously they do a great job of uh, generating turnovers in the secondary uh, with their corners, you know, 33 and then four who play some backfield safety and some nickel. So really talented team across the board. Um, a great opportunity for the Terps here at home, and we'll, we'll, have, we'll be challenged Friday, but really excited about it. You know, and some things outside of the game, um, you know, obviously we're entering uh, this Friday, we're gonna be um, playing in a mental health awareness game, uh, something that's very uh, dear to, to me and my family, uh, to bring some awareness to the stigma of mental health issues, and Iowa, I know, is participating, and a bunch of our players here in our athletic, athletic department has really supported it, along with a dear friend of mine who's come and spoke with our team in the last few years, Rachel Barbeau. Um, you know, I appreciate any and all coverage that we can give to, to this important cause. As I like to say, you know, when a guy tears an ACL or breaks an arm, it's visible. You know, when a guy's brain or a person's brain isn't healthy, we don't always understand it. And I think it's up to us and people to have these types of platforms to be able to, to bring some awareness uh, to such a, a, a great cause. Um, our captains for this week, Tayon Fleet Davis, uh, Jacorian Bennett, and then Talia Tonavailo will serve as our game captains going to Iowa. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to questions. Coach, defensively, you guys lead the Big Ten in sacks. So what have been some of the seeds to that success, and what sort of challenges does that Iowa offensive line pose you guys this Friday? Yeah, I think what we've been able to do to generate the sacks is get people into situations, adverse third long situations where uh, now, you know, we are able to create what we call five one-on-ones. Um, and the development of our pass rushers, you know, Sam Okwanako, 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 Sam Okwanako, <laughs> Sam O, let's leave it there, has really developed into a big time pass rusher for us. And, uh, you know, we hope to continue to do that. We've seen young guys like Chop Robinson kind of pick up the pace as a pass rusher. Having a healthy uh, Chami has really, I think, helped us. But the, the unsung guys are those interior dudes that play the four eyes for us. You know, the Greg Roses, the Yami Finals, and the Mo uh, Kites. These guys do a great job of pushing the pocket. And then, you know, playing man coverage, you take the opportunities away from the ball coming out fast. And that usually helps with some of the sack stuff now. What Iowa t tends to do, you know, they're not a big drop back pass team. They're more of a boot naked complement to their run game, which is the outside zone stuff. Uh, I'm not sure we'll have those type of opportunities unless we can get them into some advantageous third down situations where you now we're able to create those matchups and see how we fare. Yeah. Any update on Brandon and Ruben? Yeah, um, you know, Brandon has not practiced yet. I think he will be a game time decision. You know, we heard some fairly good news in reference to the MRI that, you know, there was nothing structural uh, there. So it's just a matter now of kind of getting him back to where he feels confident in it um, uh, with Ruben. 
we feel like he'll be a guy that will be able to play for us this weekend. Um, so that's the latest on injuries. Coach, you talked earlier in the season about playing to the standard and not worrying too much about the opponent. That was kind of in the context of games you were expected to win. Is, is the message just as resonant now when you're bringing the top five team in? Yeah, that's what makes the standard the standard. Um, it doesn't change. It's a philosophy of what it takes and how we want to play offensively, defensively, special teams as a team. And to me, the standard is a, a way of life. It's, you know, a four-quarter team, a team that plays for four quarters with great effort and mental intensity, a team that doesn't look at the scoreboard, a team that doesn't ride the wave or the ebb and flow of momentum, um, a team that plays this play right now, a team that plays together, um, a team that puts the work in this week, Sunday through Thursday, in order to enjoy the fruits of, of the game on uh, Friday. So to me, those are all the characteristics that when we talk about playing to our standard, um, and, and again, you know, didn't feel we did it that, did it like did it that way last week. Um, didn't feel like we completed and played to our standard, but you know that's why we practice and we're getting back to it. I feel good about us thus far uh, how we uh, approach this week. Um, but you know, the intensity level and how we prepare shouldn't change based on our opponent, and I think our players I understand that that philosophy. Um, you touched on it briefly during your opening remarks, but um, I just wish you could elaborate a little more on the mental health awareness game. And I know it does hit home for you and your family. And just if you could elaborate um, on why this is so important to have. Well, number one, um, I deal with the demographics of kids that when you do your research on when these breakthroughs take place, it typically is between 21 and 25. Uh, coaching 120, 121. 18 to 22 year olds. Um, a lot of these guys show up here on campus with, 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 with what I would call a lot of luggage. Um, things that they've experienced, things that they've seen that that, tip, that aren't atypical uh, of what a, a 18 year old should have to have deal with in their life. Um, there's more and more stressors on these kids that come and play collegiate athletics based off of the, you know, social media and all the information and people being able to you know, critique each and every part of their life. And so what we want to do here at Maryland and with Maryland football is create a safe haven for our players to know that they can come, uh, take off the helmet, take off the mask, and be able to say, hey, I'm not feeling good. Um, coach, I've got, you know, I'm going through some things and I want to talk to somebody. Um, and, and it's important for me because again, as a parent who lived through dealing with a child that had mental health issues, um, you know, there's a lot of things out in society now where, you know, if I wasn't afforded the luxury financially to be able to do it, it's an expensive, uh, expensive disease um, that aren't covered all the time by our medical um, coverage. Uh, and so for me, I just want to be able to create an environment here at Maryland and with our athletic department support that encourages our players that it's okay if you're not feeling good and if you need to talk about things or you have some issues and you want to be able to be a, a family environment. That's why we talk about having a football family. Well, these are issues that are real that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and not just what you guys see, the X's and O's that happen on Saturday. There are a lot of things that go on Monday through Friday in these kids' lives, and it's important for us to be able to make it a safe place for them to experience and, and, and give them the resources they need to be the best version of themselves. Hey, Coach Locks. Um, you talked right back here. <laughs> Corner here. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you talked about the, the opportunity you guys have Friday night. And I know I know you're four and zero going in, um, an opportunity to start the season five. Can you just elaborate on, you know, what winning this game would mean for this program and what it would show about where you guys are? Yeah, we aren't even there yet, Alex. To be honest, I mean, I think winning this game, and we don't even talk a lot about winning around here. Uh, we focus more on Monday through Friday, making sure that we have a, a winning routine. And then what happens on game day, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with and live with those results. We are going to continue to try to be really process driven in terms of what are the things we have to do to put ourselves in a position to win. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to have a complete week where we do things the right way up through the game and we play to our standard. Then it's a, a, another win that gives us, uh, earns us another opportunity to have another big game the following week. But, our season won't be defined by one game, uh, as it wasn't defined by what we did week one, two, three. 
uh, or, or four. So uh, we'll continue to play the, the next game as the most important. And then at the end of the year, it'll be a lot easier to answer those type of questions. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, talk about all the uh, like talent that Iowa has on defense. Obviously, you guys have a ton of offensive talent as well to counteract that. How do you plan to sort of you know, stretch out their defense and so can sort of minimize uh, minimize some of their matchup advantages and turn them into advantages for you. You want me to give you my game plan? Basically, yes. <laughs> I, don't think I'm gonna do that. I don't think I'll do that, but no, what we'll continue to do is study uh, what Iowa does. And, you know, we're in, today is a Wednesday practice for us, so we're in third down mode, red zone mode. We spent Sunday was a Monday practice. Yesterday was our Tuesday work day. And so we're still formulating that plan. I mean, they're, they're a solid, sound defensive structure that, you know, I mean, year in and year out, this is what you see. And I mean, again, because of the experience I've had playing against and coaching against this defense, it's, uh, you know, they are who they are. And I think what we've got to do is our execution has to be at an all time high. And that's what I was really disappointed more in last week was that our execution wasn't as clean or what we weren't as in rhythm on offense as I would have liked. We had some uncharacteristic drops by the receivers. Uh, you know, we had some bad, bad decision making there um, in the run game. Uh, but, you know, that's what we're practicing for. Uh, we'll continue to evaluate kind of what we do. But, you know, who we are is who we are. I mean, we're going to be a team that doesn't turn it over, work to not turn it over, try to play smarter and, and cleaner on the offensive side of the ball. We try to figure out ways to generate explosive plays because to me that's going to be the difference and they have not given up a lot of explosive plays so something's going to have to give with a good defense and what i think is a pretty good offense uh coach i know your process driven on a short week but is there time to actually have fun with having the number five team in the country come in here is there an element of, of joy to this no because we like hard we embrace hard you know fun is the game day fun is when when we get to go play, if you notice, the, the person I am in practice, which I guess you guys don't get to see, is a lot different than what you see on the TV screen because game day is where it's time to encourage our players, build them up, support them. Um, if I got to act like a maniac on game day, that means I didn't do it enough Monday through Friday. And so, you know, the fun for our players is the, is the game. But we, we're embracing the hard, tough uh, standard that we set and what we got to get accomplished to be able to have fun. So. We'll see how it goes Friday night. Hi, Mike. You talked about the, the weekly routine game Monday through Friday. Obviously, you know, it's kind of very like Friday game, get alone too. So this will be your second. Does it does it help your preparation at all? You know, not having to worry about some of that other type of stuff, administrative, administrative type of stuff, leading up to a game like this. No, it doesn't help me at all. Other than I get a lack of sleep. You know, when you turn over the game and to try to, you know, we usually have a day off with our players, which is the day after the game. For us as coaches, after our game Saturday against Kent State, we were up most of the night grading it, you know, quality controlling the game, getting all the necessary finishing touches to get that game behind us uh, to prepare for a five o'clock meeting where we would have to put Kent State behind us and then introduce Iowa and then go out and have a night practice. And so um, if you ever taught school or any type of professor, there's a lot of planning that goes into having these type of meetings and these type of practices. And, you know, we get behind it, so I guess we're still the new kids on the block with having to play two Friday night games and back-to-back -back weeks almost. And just you know, at some point, we'll get full membership to where we may not have to do this and uh, make my life a little easier. Coach, uh, uh, Leah's growth as a quarterback over the last four weeks, uh, being the new kids on the block, has he shown you the right stuff? Uh, is are you taking things step by step? Um, seriously, what has really surprised you about his play over the last month, and where would you like to see strides moving forward? You know, there hasn't been a lot of surprises, Dave. I keep saying, you know, I had a chance to see this kid play high school football. I had to see him. I had a chance to see him elevate the high school team he played for Thompson, uh, which is in one of the toughest divisions of you know Alabama high school football. Through for over, I want to say, 14,000 yards in high school in two different states. So, you know, unfortunately, he has an older brother that kind of, kind of was a famous guy, and sometimes you get kind of pegged as his little brother. But um, this kid can throw the football. This kid is a serious, really smart, uh, 
driven leader. And I just continue to see that growth that I'm aware. He's getting more and more and more confident in what we're asking him to do. Uh, the players around him obviously are helping him quite a bit, even though we had some drops Saturday, but uh, he's done a great job of being a great distributor of the ball. I like when, you know, 10, 12 guys are catching balls and, you know, the tight ends are making plays, the backs are making plays, the receivers, it makes you tough to defend. And, you know, he also has an element of uh, athleticism that adds to his uh, package. And so, you know, I've been really proud of the way he's played. Um, again, I will caution, and I keep saying this, he is, what is this now, uh, eight games into a starter at the Division One level. So I'm still just scratching the surface and like a lot of a lot of parts of our program. But I still think his best football is ahead of him, but I'm sure glad we got him leading us. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, What's up, Mike? How's it going? Um, Good, thank you. I was going to get your thoughts um, on the whole line's effort um, against Kent State now that you're able to look at the tape. Yeah, I mean, we kept our quarterback upright, and I think they were honored as one of the PFF, some external uh, place that studies it, one of the top of line uh, groups last week. And, you know, I thought they played pretty well. I mean, anytime you keep our quarterback upright, I think we gave up a sack, and you know, that was more of a coverage sack than a guy getting beat. Um, I like, as I told you, it's the most improved unit last year for us along with the DBs. We're not as deep as I would like us to be depth-wise, but you know the five to seven guys that are playing are playing at a high level. And I've been really, really proud of how they've competed. Um, you know, when you play up front, it's a, it's a war. Those guys are banging. Um, they play a lot of plays because we're an offense that plays fast. So, you know, these are big guys that are in great shape and conditioning. and. You know, we just can hope that we stay healthy up front, man, because right now they're playing good, clean, together uh, O-line play up front. Coach, I know, um, like you said, it's a little tougher to prepare for the, the short week in the Friday night games, but it also is a, a pretty big spotlight play on, on Friday night. It's one of the fewer games going on. What do you sort of hope that this does, I guess, for your program in terms of fan support or recruiting? Or? You know what I think, um, and, and I haven't been around programs that have won at a high level that has have uh, been able to capitalize on how their football programs have been. Um, this is a great opportunity to, to, to showcase the university as a whole. I mean, I know a lot of the emphasis is on the football part of it, but you know, we're a top 20 academic institution located in the most powerful area in the world. And, you know, to have all the eyes that we possibly can have uh, following the University of Maryland, not just the football program. I think to me, it's, you can't pay for these marketing dollars for uh, all the academicians and all the great things that are going on on our campus. So hopefully, you know, people are able to take notice that, you know, we're building a football brand, but we've got an academic brand and we've got great people and we've got a great location that should, you know, continue to be showcased uh, what a great place the University of Maryland is as the flagship university here for the state. Hey, Coach, uh, with a handful of injuries on the defense and you not knowing exactly who's going to be uh, on the field for you week to week, what has preparation been like and how do you think the team has been uh, rising to the challenge to meet the standard that you want them to meet every week? Well, the standard doesn't change based on who's playing. Um, you know, a standard is something that's set for everybody on our team. Um, you know, you asked the question after the game about playing a lot of players. Now you see why we play a lot of players. I think it's important. When I look at things from a macro view that you know, these injuries are part of the game. Football is a physical, tough sport. Uh, we teach it that way. We want to play it that way. And so there'll be casualties uh, from playing this type of uh, sport. And so what we've got to do is have the next man up mentality. And we try to you know, develop our roster with the way we practice. You know, we are always, you know, nobody sits and lets grass grow under their feet on our practice field. Even if they're on the scout team, they're being coached, they're being developed. You know, a great example is, you know, Kobe Thomas did not take one snap with our defense last week, not one. He was on the offensive field being the other team's defense. But because of how we develop our players on training camp, because of what we do in our individual development, he was thrown in there and played pretty much the whole second half and played really clean for us and really earned uh, opportunities to to now go be a part of that rotation. So that's what that's why we practice the way we do. That's why we play a lot of players, because you're going to have those type of injuries and your players need to
to be developed in a way that when their numbers are called, they can go out and perform and not have a huge drop off in the talent level. Thank you, Thanks, guys.